In this section, we'll focus on finalizing the API gateway. We'll take a look at implementing the required event handlers, storing the data using MongoDB, refactoring and securing endpoints, and finally, testing our HTTP requests using Postman and curl. In this video, we'll focus on implementing the event handlers. At first, we'll discuss the required handlers, and finally, we'll make some improvements and implement them correctly. Within our API, we have a single event handler. As you can see here, we have the handler for activity created and for the user allocated and the user created. But we want to focus only on this one. We want to, I would like to show you the way how you can actually implement such handler uh, in a proper manner so that later on implementing the other handlers will be really easy. All right, so let's assume that within our API, we'll have a repository, for example, uh, we could create a folder here, curl repositories, and let's create a new interface. And let's just say we have the iActivity repository interface. We'll focus on implementing this repository in the next video, but let's assume that we will have there a single method called add async. And this method will take some activity, which will be the model of our um, rep that will be available for our repository. And we'll also create our um, DTO model in the next video. But let's assume for now that this one is available here. And before we can use our repository, we'll of course have to register it in our IOC container. So just say add scoped I activity repository. And let's say that we'll have there a class called activity repository. So we can already create it. And this one will, of course, implement our activity repository. But let's not focus on implementing and actually creating a proper activity repository now. What we can do within our activity created handler? Let's create a constructor. And we could inject here our iActivity repository. Let's assign it to the proper private field that the missing using here. And basically, within our handle async, we could just call our await activity repository at async and provide here our new activity model. And later on, we could show this activity created message using console write line or some custom logger. And basically, we would do the same, for example, for the user created handler. If you'd like to keep within our internal API database the user model, or category model or anything else, we would do it in the same in the same way. So we'll focus only on implementing an activity create handler and the activity repository, and we'll take a look at how we can actually um, create a proper model, store it within our API database, and then return it to the end user via activities controller. In this video, we talked about the event handlers available for our API, and we showed, actually I showed how we can refactor our handler to store the data in the database.